yo welcome back to the channel listen some of you been moving like it's been a few quarters since the last update come like earnings season or something but listen it's only been absent the last couple of weeks as they say absence makes the heart grow fonder and if you're feeling fond right now because you're listening to a portfolio update then please 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 put some of that fondness on the like button put some of that fondness in the comments if you're new put some of that new fondness on the subscribe button and remember to ring that notification bell so you are notified when I update new videos. If you're new to investing as a whole, grab a free share while you're at it, 200 pounds worth up to. The link is down below. Last but not least, join the board members. We've got over 100 members and you know what? We've been getting money the past few weeks, man. I can't even lie to you, man. I've been posting some of the gains from some of the members on Instagram and people have been doing very, very well the past few weeks. So yeah, join the board members. If you want a community, like-minded individuals, that's gonna help you navigate the market and hopefully, you know, build your wealth as well. But listen, we're gonna be focusing on my free trade portfolio update this week. And naturally it being a portfolio update, you know, I have to make sure that there's something meaningful and something valuable to talk about. There has to be activity within my portfolio. If there's no activity, then effectively there's nothing to actually update you on. And so the past few weeks has been pretty quiet. However, this week there's been a number of structural changes. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about four stocks that I've sold. We're going to talk about one stock that I've bought. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments, queries, questions, concerns about some of the activity in my portfolio this week. And so, yeah, definitely put that into the comments and then we'll just chop this up. But listen, let's get straight into the top movers. And the first top mover to talk about is Virgin Galactic. So Virgin Galactic has gone up 16.62%. As always, I'm going to be reading the percentages from Simply Wall Street. And the primary reason why Virgin Galactic has gone up is due to a reduction of COVID cases in New Mexico. So Virgin Galactic Space Station, their launch pad, you know, where they're going to be taken off from is basically in New Mexico. New Mexico initiated what's called a health order, which basically restricted a lot of businesses from basically operating. Um, and actually the cases of COVID within New Mexico has started to drastically drop over the past few weeks. And so that's created quite a bullish sentiment around Virgin Galactic reinstating their operations. So the next date we're looking for is November the 30th. This is when we'll get the final confirmation that New Mexico will lift its health order and let Virgin Galactic commence their operations. And if they do so, then, you know, hopefully Virgin Galactic will rock it, pun very much intended. So yeah, that's the first top mover for this week. The second top mover for the week is Tesla. I know some of you lot are creaming right now based off Tesla. Tesla's gone up 19.64% and it's primarily due to the inclusion into the S&P 500. So it was announced that Tesla will be included into the S&P 500. This will happen at some point towards the end of the year. They're working out how much, you know, they might have to take two companies out. They might have to split Tesla um, from a stock perspective. Um, so they're all working that out at the moment, but it's definitely confirmed that Tesla will be included into the S&P 500. You've also got Wedbush analyst Dan Ives, who's one of the major bulls for Tesla, who's given a price target of $560, which has obviously surpassed that right now. But he's actually raised his bull case to $1,000. If Tesla can deliver 1 million vehicles by 2023, which potentially could be plausible, and he expects the stock to be an $1,000 stock, which would make the market cap something, something ridiculous, to be fair. It's estimated that by 2025, 10% of all auto sales will be electric. So Tesla still being the leader in this business will heavily, heavily benefit from this shift to green energy, from this shift to EV, which is happening across the board. But the top mover for this week is... CIIC, CIIG, Merger Corp. But listen, I'm going to talk about this later because this is obviously the stock that I've bought. And you can see that this week has gone up 41.77%. I don't know why it says it's down 5.3%, but it's actually gone up 41.77% this week. But listen, I'm going to talk about this a bit later because this is obviously the stock that I've bought. We're going to get into the top fallers for the week. And there's only one top faller to speak of, and that is pineapple. Pineapple's gone down a measly 0.64%. And, you know, for a growth stock to go 0.64% in any direction, there's there's nothing to really speak about um, that's actually caused this. This is just natural movement of the market. So 
Let's get into the stocks that I've actually sold and removed from the portfolio. The first stock that I've actually sold is Okta. So I've sold Okta now. You know, I held Okta for over a year, well over a year. Um, and, you know, a few times it creeped into 100% profit. But this week I sold, it was around 98 point something percent profit. Very, very happy with Okta. Okta was one of the stocks at the beginning that you guys know that, you know, when I started transitioning to growth stocks well over a year ago now, um, I was obviously doing my research on what stocks I think is actually going to be doing well over the next few years. Um, and Okta just screamed like a really sturdy business. And this is well before the whole Divock 91 situation. So, you know, we were talking about, we did this, what, when was the first time I bought Okta? Yeah, that 23rd of November, 2020, you can see, sorry, no, 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 the 90th of December, 2019, and Divock 91 wasn't even a, a consideration at around that time. So um, during that period, um, obviously it's probably helped and it definitely helped Okta, I think, probably go further than maybe it, it probably would have gone. But I definitely think Ot is a solid business. I'm I'm in a position now where I'm trying to consolidate a lot of my holdings. So I'm not trying to have like 15 holdings, 24 holdings. I think at one stage I had 26 holdings. I'm trying to focus my portfolio, have, you know, six, seven holdings, key things that I actually believe in uh, and put more eggs in, into a smaller number of baskets. And I know that, you know, general financial practice and financial advice will always say diversify and have you know, 30 holdings and so forth. I just find that I think I'm a better investor when I focus on certain businesses and I think I genuinely have a better performance. So this is one of the reasons why I've sold Okta. It's nothing to do specifically with the business, but it's to do with my strategy and focusing on what I think is going to be the best winners for 2021. The second stock, which pretty much falls into the exact same category, was PayPal. So I sold PayPal as well this week. It was around an 80% profit. So between Okta and PayPal, you know, 98%, 80%, you know, selling profitable positions and obviously reinvesting them, which is for me, you know, what the whole investing game is about. Nothing wrong with PayPal as well. Exactly the same reason as Okta, just trying to consolidate positions and obviously make sure that I'm putting as much as I possibly can into the stocks that I actually believe in going forward so I can generate, you know, a better return, a better tax-free return of that as well. The next stock was Sentimin. So Sentimin I sold. Now Sentimin my obviously has dropped down quite heavily recently. Um Fortunately for me, because I've held I've held sentiment for about two years, I've got sentiment at really, really low prices, like 90p, 80p. I can't remember the exact price. Um, so, you know, you can see here how long that I've kind of, you know, held sentiment for. So just by virtue of me having sentiment since 20, like 2018, um, I was still in profit. I know a lot of you guys that held sentiment recently and bought sentiment recently was in much more of a loss. But I think I probably made about 5% profit in terms of capital gain. But then obviously I've been receiving dividends from sentiment for the past two years as well. So netting out probably about 12, 13% overall. Um, which again, I'm more than happy with. Um, sentiment is probably a stock that will resurface in my portfolio probably in the next tax year um, because I do think that, you know, you're not always going to have good times with growth and you're going to need to hedge with gold and I just like the way that sentiment operates. But for the time being, I think between now and between April, I can definitely generate a lot more um, capital by, you know, focusing uh, my portfolio a little bit more so that's the reason why sentiment is gone and the last one which you've probably guessed is also gone is Lloyd's so Lloyd's um, has left my portfolio as well now again another stock that I've held for a couple of years but to be honest I'm more bullish on growth stocks um, Lloyd's is obviously a good dividend stock with my strategy going into 2021 and I mentioned a few weeks ago that I will be doing a video on this you know I'm not really going to be worried about dividends um, for the next year at least um, it's going to be more primarily focused on growth. It's been growth for the last year, to be fair, but there's obviously been like a percentage of my holders that have dividends as well. I'm going to be a lot more concentrated. It's going to be mainly focused on growth. And then, you know, anything outside of that will just probably be trading, which is I've been doing in trading 212 and so forth. So yeah, sold Lloyd's, obviously took a hit on Lloyd's. So that was about a 19% hit. Lloyd's did start to rally up a little bit, which was good, but nowhere near the 60, you know, 60, 65p that I needed it to be um, in terms of, you know, how much 
um, I was investing at all the prices I was investing at previously. Uh, but obviously, when you take into consideration all the dividends I've previously earned from Lloyd's, um, and obviously the little rise and the averaging down and so forth, I think it worked out to be about 25% loss or something along those lines, which is significant. I think it's a significant loss. But that loss has definitely been recouped with my new investment. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about now. So all of that has basically gone into one stock, which is CIIG Merger Corp. So this company is a SPAC. As you can see, the company's called Arrival, which is what they're merging with. And this is something that I'm extremely, extremely bullish on. I think, you know, there's definitely been a lot of hype in the EV sector. You know, anything green's getting funded right now. But listen, for me personally, you know, if you exclude all of the hype, you know, are some of these companies going to fail 100%? Is Arrival one of them? No chance. Like, listen, this company for me is special in a number of ways. And I'm going to actually be talking about, you know, why I put four stocks worth of, you know, value into one stock and why I'm generally quite bullish um, on this holding. And obviously, you know, this is my top mover for this week as well. So I did this position on Monday. I know some people got into it, you know, last week, Friday, last week, Thursday, and actually making uh, much more of a killing. I think it's definitely going to pull back over the next few months. Um, and then I'm actually going to consider how I'm going to add more into it, which might mean selling a few more other positions temporarily um, to obviously take advantage of that. But listen, let me talk about why I believe that Arrival is, you know, personally for me, a really good business over the next, you know, at least three years, which will be my initial horizon for it. So this stock has got, well, this company rather, has got 1,078 employees, according to LinkedIn. But, you know, from what I've heard, it's actually about 1,300. You know, not everyone obviously creates a LinkedIn profile and whatnot. So this company is a UK-based EV company, one of the first. They produce commercial vehicles, namely buses and delivery vans. And I think there's a lot less competition than there is in the passenger EV space. So effectively, just cars and scooters and whatnot. They have a micro factory model whereby in six months they can launch one in a company's existing warehouse and they can build any of their vehicles. So, you know, if John's warehouse has enough space, they can launch their micro factory inside it and they can actually start to build their own vehicles, which then has them be able to create this kind of hub and spoke model where they've got their main factory in Bista um, in the UK, but then they can have a lot of different factories pretty much all of the, over the world, wherever the demand is, which I think is going to be really important. It's basically the inverse of Tesla's Gigafactory approach, having a really, really massive factory with massive overheads. They're having much more smaller, nimble, agile factories um, closer to where their customers are, which I think is quite important. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, they have sustainability and material senior experts in their team, which I think is is really powerful for a number of reasons one they use their own composite material um which is more durable than metal and this is how they actually build the chassis of their vehicles and there's a few videos online about that which i definitely would encourage you to go watch and you can see you know how it's more durable than metal so if you obviously slam or smash it or break it or roll over it um, it can actually rebound and be reused they can fully recycle all of the offcuts of all of their materials and they reuse it in more vehicles. So effectively, there's no material wastage. And I think when you're dealing with an EV company, when you're dealing with something that's all about being green, you know, factors like that, characteristics like that, I think is extremely important. It's what people are going to value that, you know, there's not going to be any wastage. But in fact, it's always going to be fully recyclable, fully reusable within their vehicles, which I think is really important. They're a vertically, vertically integrated business. So they own all elements of their supply chain from batteries to chassis and everything in between. We've seen the challenges that certain other EV companies have had because they get their batteries from certain other providers. And if those providers are having issues in their supply chain, then naturally it affects, you know, the, the overall business. Whereas this company does everything themselves. So effectively, you know, you can walk into their warehouse and from concept design through to actually creating the vehicle and making it, you know, usable on the roads, they can do that all themselves end to end, which I think is quite a good, unique selling point. 
they've been operating since 2015 so they're not a brand new company they've been around for the last five years focusing on research and development to try and you know build and create the best vehicles one of the key things as well is that they've been working with ups to build delivery vans for them so ups have kind of um, supported them to help try and identify what their biggest pain points are and for them to try and tailor these vans that are going to be suitable for UPS and then obviously other delivery partners in the future. UPS also have an order of 10,000 vehicles once production starts in 2021 with an option to buy another 10,000 vehicles. They have a hundred million pound investment from Hyundai and Kia in a joint collaboration agreement. My assumption here is that, you know, they're probably going to be building vehicles for Hyundai and Kia at some stage in the future. Um, you know, we've seen in previous videos that I mentioned, probably in the Neo videos or the Workhorse video talking about, you know, the UK trying to be green by 2030 and obviously Europe trying to be green by 2030. Um, I think this is obviously you know, this partnership is going to help those legacy businesses like Hyundai and Kia, who are going to struggle to turn all their ICE vehicles into EV vehicles in that time frame. You know, Arrival might be a key strategic partner in helping them do that. They've got £1.2 billion in orders as it stands currently. Um, LinkedIn names them the, the number one UK startup to work for. So in terms of their culture and, and, their, and their people, um, it's a very, very talented culture, talented employees, and people actually are extremely happy um, working there, which I think is is definitely a selling point to show you that this is not a fad business. This is a genuine business doing genuine things, um, which I think is obviously going to be powerful going forward. Their CEO is called Denis Sverdlov. He's a, of Russian descent, and he's currently also negotiating with the Moscow government to build and trial a fleet of electric vehicle buses for them. So, you know, with his obviously Moscow and his, his Russian links, then I think that's going to be helpful for the business. But also their merger with the US SPAC being CIIC will enable them to get a footprint in North America. And then obviously they're based in UK, which then has easy access to Europe. So I just think this, the people that's in the company and the way the company is kind of structured, you've got, you know, a UK base, it's registered in America and you've got Russian and, and other people that's sort of involved at an extremely senior level, which I think can help them get to different parts globally and actually create a lot more partnerships, a lot more agreements and get a lot more deals um, into the future. EV vehicles are extremely expensive and this is one of the things that, you know, makes a lot of people not move over to EV vehicles. One of the key selling points for Arrival is their model ensures price parity. So you're not going to be penalised for being green. The whole point is that you can move from an ICE vehicle to an EV vehicle and not spend any more money with Arrival. And that's the whole purpose um, of their model. They don't want to make sure people or companies rather are paying anything more for that. You've also got, you know, 5,000 vehicles in late stage to discussions with LOIs, letter of intent, and that's basically companies saying, you know, we, we have an intent to buy a further 5,000 vehicles from you at some stage in the future, probably when production starts as well. So listen, uh, these are my rationales for buying this stock. It's because obviously it's a SPAC and it's fairly new. You can't really go off earnings. You can't really go off, you know, historic revenues. You know, this is this is a greenfield company, so to speak. So there has to be, you know, you have to believe in the vision of the company. And you have to believe in, you know, what their potential prospects are in the future. I definitely think there's been a lot of hype around this. And obviously that's the reason why it's rocketed. So yeah, my, my predictions is that this will definitely go down. Um, to what price, I don't know, but I definitely think it's going to be under 20 and I know if it does go under 20 then I'm definitely going to be adding more and it might mean selling an Apple and Amazon and AMD I'm not too sure yet but it might mean you know reducing some of those holdings in order to get more now while I can and while it goes down because by the time it's April I think that this stock is probably going to be you know a lot higher and a lot bigger position than it's obviously in now so I don't want to obviously miss the opportunity so yeah listen definitely do your own research you know I'm not recommending that you actually buy this stock um, you know, who knows what could happen? It actually could just fail and it, it, you know, it might have some scandals and you never know what's going to happen. So definitely do your own research. But yeah, I'm definitely, definitely bullish on this stock. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I've sold four stocks in order to fund this and probably will be doing a lot more in the future. So yeah, look out for it. Listen, thanks for your time. If you like the video, please like the video, subscribe. If you're new, join the more board members. Enjoy your weekend. And last but not least, peace.